Trains here, welcome back to the railway. Today I'm going to be unboxing another DMU, so yeah, this video is for all those diesel lovers out there. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done a decent uh, diesel review, so uh, sorry for the wait, but uh, here is one now. Anyway, as you can probably tell, this is the class 110 from Hornby. Now, I'm not exactly sure when this model was made. I believe they first came out somewhere in the mid-80s, I think about 1983, but then they were released quite a few times since then. I think there was even one in the 2000s, 2003, something like that. So, yeah, I'm not 100% sure when this one would have been made, but the packaging suggests that it's probably older rather than newer. So, yeah, this is a three-car DMU. They were quite uh, popular, as far as I can tell. And uh, I'll just show you the end of the box uh, because it's on number R369, three car diesel multiple unit, class 110. And on the back, I did get a bit excited because it looked like there was some information on the class, but no, apparently that's just about uh, the Hornby uh, catalogue and things. So uh, nothing too interesting to read about there. So I'm going to get this one out straight away for you. Right. And this cost me £45, by the way, so yes, there are a lot more modern DMUs out there these days uh, with a lot more detail on them and probably a lot better performance, but I don't think you could probably beat this for £45, <laughs> and it is pretty well detailed, I must admit. Okay, you do get this pack, and I thought it was a detailed pack, but it's not. It's just a couple of, a couple of couplings. <laughs> it's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, so yeah, I suppose they could go on the front of the units. I don't know in real life whether they would have had things coupled to the front of them or not, but you can do that if you fancy with the models. And that's quite useful actually, because I'm always short of those couplings, so I can break into them and uh, steal them if I ever need if I ever need some. Anyway, let's get these out then. Uh, as you can see, it's in the lovely BR green, and I'll start with the uh, the engine car without the engine, if that makes sense. Try and get it out. So yeah, there it is, as you can see. Uh, it's very, very nicely painted. Um, truly very nicely painted. And uh, it's quite weighty, it has metal wheels. It's not all that heavy, but it doesn't really need to be, does it? I suppose it's probably better if it's a bit lighter. So there you have it. Quite a very, very nicely detailed thing, of course. Okay, and the, uh, the non-powered car. And this one doesn't have a cab at either end, of course, because it goes in the middle. So there it is, similar sort of thing, very, uh, very nicely detailed. I mean, if this is from the 1980s, I'm very, very impressed. And I assume the, to the tooling will be from the 1980s. So there it is, more on these later on, of course. And finally then, the power car, which does have the dreaded Ringfield motor in it. But uh, I've serviced this one, and I must say, it does seem to run very nicely. So I can't really complain. Much heavier, this one, of course. Uh, it's definitely a lot heavier towards the engine end. It uh, really does weigh quite a bit, that does. But that's good because it means it's probably got some decent traction in there. So let me show you these together. Move all this packaging. This is just a bit of white card, by the way. You can, uh, you can cover the window of the box if you want. I suppose that protects them from the sun and that sort of thing. So there you have it. There we go then, the Class 110 DMU. I'm dead excited about getting this one running for you. Uh, but first of all, here's a little bit of history on the class, and then I'll get on to the review for you. So the BR Class 110 was introduced in the early 1960s when 30 sets were produced between 1961 and 1962. Each set consisted of three cars, some of which were reduced to just two during their lifetime, but they all started with three apparently. The class performed passenger duties around the Lancashire and Yorkshire area and proved themselves to be extremely capable engines. In fact, the class 110 became the most powerful DMUs to run in the UK and they served until 1988 when all but two of them were scrapped. Those two have been preserved and one of them is a two car set and the other one is a three car set. Okay, so here is the front car with the motor in it of the DMU, and I'm just going to show you this car and then the centre car, because the uh, the other end car is very similar to this, except this one has a section here without any seats, which is where the ring-filled motor is housed, and presumably in real life, uh, that's where the engine or even sort of the braking system, I don't know, something like that would have been housed. But yeah, as you can see, for quite an old model, you know, the tooling at least is pretty old, the detail on it is really, really nice. So let's have a look at the painted work, first of all. You can see here there is the British Railways crest, which is very, very nicely applied. It is very finely detailed, that is. 
and uh, there's quite a lot of printed detail as well. Uh, so you've got the running number here, which is E51812. You've got the guard written on the door there. And then you've got a bit of a loading warning, I think that says something something about the load on there. Uh, again, very tiny text, but definitely legible. And then around the front, as you can see, you've got the stripes. I don't know if these stripes have a sort of name. I'm sure I've heard them called something before. But you've got those, and then you've got the lights, which don't work, unfortunately, but they are painted into white. And then you've got a little warning sign there, probably for high voltage or something like that. And while we're looking at the cab end, I might as well show you inside the cab. There is some detail in there, and of course it's done in a sort of creamy coloured plastic, which is probably similar to what it would have been like in real life. And there are some controls and things you can see just there on the dashboard, for want of a better word. So that is quite a nice touch, and it does just catch your eye sometimes when it's going along. Let's have a look at some of the moulded detail then and separately fitted parts. Now I reckon this has been modelled on a summer's day because as you can see some of the windows have been left open here, some of them are shut and then uh, the doorway here, the window is partially, uh, well the window's down you would say. Uh, so uh, yeah that is a really nice thought isn't it? Uh, so yep yeah, on nice hot summer's days I can run this and uh, it will look very realistic. You can see inside there's some fairly nicely detailed chairs as well. Um, I could put some people inside there I suppose as well and that would really enhance things. And uh, then on the underframe, the underframe has a lot of moulded detail as you can see. It's very very nice to look at that is. And uh, there's this uh, pipe work which I believe is separately fitted which is pretty cool. The corridor connection is separately fitted as well and that is a very nicely detailed piece and you also have what appear to be some sort of exhausts perhaps, I assume they might be exhausts for the uh, gases from the engine, I'm not sure, but they appear to be separately fitted as well. So yeah, as I'm sure you can tell, quite a nicely detailed little piece of kit, isn't it? Um, it's not the newest thing in the world, it doesn't have sprung buffers for example, as you can see. But other than that, for someone who isn't too picky, <laughs> well, I don't know, you might disagree with that, um, this is absolutely perfect for me, and as I say, for £45, it's fantastic. Okay, then, let me give you a quick look at the centre coach. So here's the centre coach then, and just like the uh, the driving car, it is very nicely detailed. Of course it has this lovely yellow lining, uh, which the driving cars do have as well of course, and that lining goes right along the whole unit, so it is uh, quite a lovely thing when they're all together. Uh, in many ways it's just the same, it's got uh, the running number, different running number of course, because it's a different uh, piece of rolling stock, uh, E59695 this one is. But other than that it is quite similar, inside you can see once again you have the seating, and you've got similar sorts of warning signs uh, at each end of it, including the uh, corridor connections, which again do look quite nice when they're all put together. Uh, it does make it look a lot more realistic. The underframe is quite detailed on this. It isn't the same, of course, because uh, this wouldn't have had any engine work inside it. So you have just got the, uh, the regular coach fittings, I suppose you'd say. Uh, but yeah, generally quite a nicely detailed thing. I will show you the roof. The roofs on each of these are all quite similar, but you can see here there's uh, some different moulded details on them. So yeah, quite a nice looking thing, and as I already said, the other engine car is uh, basically very similar. There wouldn't be much more to add by showing you that one. So uh, yeah, let's go and get this whole thing tested and uh, see how it runs, shall we? So there's the class 110 then all together and it does look fantastic doesn't it, blimey, it makes you love diesels. I'm a steam lover personally but uh, you know when I see a diesel that looks just as good as this does, uh, yeah you've got to love it. Anyway on the middle line I'm also going to be running the Derby Lightweight which is another of my favourite DMUs and uh, I don't have that many so I suppose that's why but truly a lovely DMU that one. And then on the inner line I have the Triang Blue Pullman uh, which is a, well it's a five piece set because it's got three coaches. So uh, there that is, and also keep an eye out on the line, there are I think seven other engines, so uh, keep an eye out for those, see if you can spot which ones they are, and also try and tell me which is the odd one out in the comments. Anyway, let's focus in on the power car then of the Class 110 and uh, see how it gets on, shall we, at slow speeds. Now it is parked on an express point, and uh, yes, the motor part is actually right on the dead spot, so we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, bless it. It is one of those ring field motors, so it doesn't have great slow speed. Let's go back a bit. <laughs> it gives all the passengers a real deep tissue massage. Alright, well, it isn't too bad, is it? Let's be honest. Let's get it going forwards then. It's a bit better speed. There we go. Sorry about that. Well, there aren't any passengers on board, so they're all safe, I think. 
Okay, let's get the Derby Lightweight running then. Here she goes. This one has got the lights in it, so it's a real treat to see this one go. There we go. Lovely. And finally then, the Triang Blue Pullman. Let's give her some juice then. And this is the best slow run of them all, actually. Look at that. Superb. Okay. There it goes then. And enjoy the running session, and good luck with the train spotting. There it goes. It is a great runner, isn't it? Not so much at slow speeds, but it's definitely okay at this speed. Very, very impressive. But it ha it's got real, real charm about it, hasn't it? I mean, look at that. I would have loved to have ridden one, to be honest, back in the day. And yes, the second hill still isn't back yet. It's still down in the garage, but look what I've got. <laughs> it's not in focus. But uh, yes, the turf has arrived, so uh, as soon as I finish filming this, I'm going to go and do that. That blue Pullman's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, it's a shame I don't run it more often. I ought to. Here we are, just going to have the Derby Lightweight and the Class 110 cross each other. Lovely. Got the blue Pullman just overtaking as well. Yeah, it's great. I love having a diesel running session. And uh, Whoa, 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 whoa. Spoke too soon. Okay, hang on. I think I may have just caught it derailing on camera. Uh, that is the one problem I've got with it. It does. It is a little bit prone to derailing, to be honest. Um, the driving car is okay, but the non-driven cars are a little bit too light, and it does cause it to trip over itself sometimes. It's a little bit of a shame, but as long as you keep it slow, 90% of the time it's okay. And now for my ratings then on the Hornby Class 110 DMU. The detail, 7 out of 10, it isn't bad at all really, I think it's pretty impressive for the age. And performance, 6 out of 10, yes it's quite a good runner at uh, you know, a moderate speed, but at slow speeds it really isn't very good. But the non-driven cars are a little bit light and also their bogies are a little bit stiff, so they do have the odd derailment sometimes. Character though, 9 out of 10, I think it is just a beautiful DMU, one of the, one of the nicest I've seen certainly, so high marks for the character. Build quality, 9 out of 10, it seems to be very sturdily built, and as I say, I have serviced it so it's been apart and I've not uh, managed to damage anything, so it seems to be well built. Value for £45, I thought that was very, very good, so 9 out of 10 there, which gives her overall 7.91 out of 10, and if I stick that into the ranking, you can see that she ranks 18th, just above the TTS Class 40, and just below the Hornby Percy set. Well, everything seems to be running really nicely today anyway. Yeah, I'm over the moon with it, really. Um, especially the uh, Derby Lightweight, to be honest. That one is always a super runner, but I can never figure out how to service it. <laughs> so, I don't know what's going to happen when it starts to run badly. Can't seem to get the body off without destroying it, so... Yeah, oh well. Talking of the devil, is it going to appear? Yes, it is. Here it is. <laughs> Always good timing. Yeah, it's lovely that is. I wonder, did these ever have three units? Three cars, I should say. I can't remember. Anyway, folks, I think that is just about it for today. I hope you've had a nice time watching some diesels for a change. I certainly have, and uh, if you're a, a die-hard Steam fan, I apologise, but uh, there will be some more Steam coming soon. Anyway, as I was saying, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to leave the video a like or even a comment, because I do love it when you guys get in touch. And also, you can check out the Facebook and Twitter pages too, if you'd like to, and they're at facebook.com forward slash samstrains, or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. It would be lovely to see you over there, but for now, once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Alright, cheers everybody.